five, four, three, two, one. Action. Action. You just really wanted to do that, didn't you? Five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. Good morning, guys. It is Thursday night for us. Your water keeps rolling. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the H2O. Uh, Friday morning for you guys. I got this in the mail today. I thought that would be fun to show it. Th that felt official. What was oh. that? That's me. I felt like Steven Spielberg or Francis Ford Coppola or uh, what? what's happening here? Nothing, babe. I'm trying to get back to my and I'm cool. turning my volume so, down. Or George Lucas. Star Wars. Cool. Your head looks bigger than mine. Oh, my God. What is wrong with you? Because you're heck of close. You're like this. <laughs> you're like really mean no now your head looks normal it's just you're a little bit closer so mean you guys mean oh mean oh mean gosh anyways yeah how so are you guys doing today hopefully you guys are doing good yesterday was a very short devotional i apologize you need to show them that good deal by the way. I can't reach over there. Before the end of the thing, we need to reach over there. Okay? Sure. Okay. Sure. Anyways. All right. So let's jump right into it because yeah? it's kind of late. Yeah. So we'll give them an even shorter one than yesterday? We told them we'd give them a regular one. We are going to give them a regular one. That's why we're going to jump right into it today. Okay. But you know what we did want to share at least, though? I don't. What? Okay, the other day we talked about Hoggly Wogglies. Oh, snap, you're right. Yes. Okay. So go ahead, tell them. I'll I'll, I'll read I'll read it. I'll look at I'll look at it. I'm gonna recap, best. guys, in case some yeah. of you probably don't watch the devotional to the end, some of you. Because at the very end, a couple nights ago, I told you that in La in Los no, San Fernando, mm -hmm. there's a barbecue place. And when we were down there, I was like, where are we going to eat? She's like, oh, let's go to Hoggly Woggly. And I'm like, that's a funny name, but sure, let's go. It's a barbecue. Sounds good. But then when I pulled up, it said Texas barbecue. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. There ain't no Texas barbecue in California. And for sure, there ain't no Texas barbecue in the middle of Metropolis, Los Angeles. You know? So, guys, my family's from Texas. So I know what real Texas barbecue tastes like. But it's a funny name, Hoggly Woggly, right? Yeah. So we go in there and check this out. Before I even took a bite, I knew I was, yeah, I was, I might have been parked in California, but when you stepped in there, we stepped into Texas because they dropped a plate of protein and a loaf of bread. That's when I knew it was real. So it was amazing. But, anyways, we were so what what's i don't know what the story after that so it's called um, hoggly woggly right yeah it's called hoggly woggly and I'll, I'll tell you guys really quick it was just in a quick nut, nutshell because i was and if you do go there show them our picture and say man these people have a youtube channel and they told us to come here so the the story is is that Somebody had somebody had posted uh, the reason why we're bringing it up again is because somebody I told David we were sitting here talking with his mom who's and, from Texas yes and she's like I really want to go now you know and she goes she never goes anywhere guys Mina you know it's true she does not but she's like I'd be willing to go there because when she visits home <laughs> when she visits home in Texas when she goes back home. Texas barbecue has, that's, you got to have it. You got to do it. Yeah. But there's a place she grew up called. It's called the Piggly Wiggly. So she brought it up and then you she said, brought it wait up. a second, and somebody said, said it in the no, comments. No, 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 not just that. But I told him, wait a minute. Every time that I used to go eat there, I said, that name sounds very familiar. Piggly Wiggly. I said, I just know it. I go, I think I've seen it somewhere. I don't know why. And I go, it just rings a bell to me. 
that when I went to Hoggly Woggly, I remember that name, Piggly Wiggly. And he's on like, no, 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 you know, and after I'm like, he goes, but it does sound like a, a Texas name for some reason. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I, I decided to look up the history and then I seen somebody posted something on the and they said like, you know, are you sure they don't, you know, it, it reminds me a lot of Piggly Wiggly here in Texas. And so I decided to look it up. I said, what's the history of Hoggly Woggly? So guys, here it is. So former Piggly Wiggly delivery boy, okay, boy. his boy, sorry. He was a delivery boy for Piggly Wiggly. His name was Johnny Green. So he actually, number one, he was a pharmacist and that's how he got the name Doc. So, and what happened that he was a really big guy and you know, his, his wife says, you know, you, you're not Piggly, you're not going to name your restaurant Piggly Wiggly. Instead, you're going to name it Hoggly Woggly. No, I thought she said, you're a big guy. You ain't no Piggly Wiggly. You're a Hoggly Woggly. You're a Hoggly Woggly. Yeah, you're not no Piggly Wiggly. You're a Hoggly Woggly. And that's how it became. And he was, he, be, he ended up going to school for a pharmacist. So that's how he got the doctor in there. And it became Dr. Hoggly Woggly. So for those of you who thought it was from Piggly Wiggly, guess what? He was a delivery boy from Piggly Wiggly mm -hmm. and he was Texan. And that's why he now has Hoggly Woggly here. And that's why it tastes like Texan barbecue. And that's barbecue. why it tastes like Texan barbecue. And it is to the T and it is awesome barbecue. So yeah, it, it made sense. You know, he was a big guy and it, Ended up becoming uh, Dr. Hogley Wally. We're visiting your mom soon, so you we're already gonna, know. Yeah, we're going to bring some for his mom, you know, so she can taste it. Yeah. One way or another, we're going to try. But um, it was just interesting, guys. But back to you. Let's well, go actually, back to you. Know, you know, it's a trip now that we're talking about the roots of some places, right? Today, we saw this old 1930s car uh, yes. on the road, right? We were just, we were running errands all day, man. It was just insane. Learn new things every day. But... I saw this, you know, the old fashioned cars, um, they had like this um, giant suitcase, like a giant trunk in the back. And I look and I said, it's a trunk in the back. Yeah, like a, like the kind that we, we see regular trunks, guys. You know, trunk, that's what trunk? they're called, like a giant trunk you put in the bedroom or the foot of the bed kind of. And I said, is that why it's called the trunk? So we go back and we looked at the history. Guys, why do you, now we now we understand why they're called trunks, and that's where the trunk actually came from. It's because the that's, old cars. that's yep. what how the old cars actually because they didn't have regular trunks. Those were the trunks that were used as trunks. Yeah. And that's where they got their name. It's because of the trunk was made yeah. for that. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it was so Maybe interesting. Maybe you guys all knew that and we we're the last in the earth. <laughs> the last people on the earth to know that but it was a uh, we you learned know, something new guys if you learn one thing a day you're in the right direction yeah now that's good since we're on that there's another one i want to bring up to you that i bet a lot of you don't know is that um there was a coffee shop years years ago in san francisco and it was called pete's coffee okay and pete's coffee was very known they had a few little spots in, in san francisco bay area and this young man that worked there as a barista moved up to um in the seattle area and he wanted to open his own coffee shop so he made a deal with his boss and said hey can i buy some of the the beans from you because the pete's coffee beans were really good so they made a deal so he would buy coffee beans from pete's and he started a cafe called Starbucks. <laughs> so, and then as you know, Starbucks became what it became and they no longer bought from Pete's Coffee. Um, they're actually competitors now, you know, but yeah. personally I like Pete's Coffee because Starbucks tastes burnt. Actually, he yeah. really he really doesn't, this is what he thought. <laughs> okay, he thought he loved coffee, but he really loved creamer. That's right. 
He said, I thought I loved coffee. Turns out I really love creamer. Bam. So, um, but yeah, just you guys are learning all kinds of stuff today, huh? It feels yeah, like one of those cool. kid shows where just a bunch of facts. I know. It was pretty cool, though. Yeah. Really, really cool. I love, I love little things like that. But all right, let's go on. Let's go to uh, John, guys. We're going to be going to John. Oh, well, since, you know what? So we can just end it after. Mm -hmm. Let's just go ahead and get this now. Because we found an amazing deal. At Walmart. At Walmart. Yeah. Guys, if you were ever, though, in Stockton. Oh my gosh. If, if you want some good coffee in Stockton, besides Dutch Brothers. Dutch Brothers is good, actually, but they're not only in Stockton. They're everywhere. I was reminded today how good Empresso is. My drink was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was a iced Mexican coffee at Impresso, and you will be impressed. So. Uh, I just got a, ice, a regular ice green tea. You didn't, you weren't feeling it, a though. Jazz, huh? uh, no, no. No, which is the one you didn't like? No, you did like today. Mm. Oh, you wait. No, I didn't. I didn't. The, Their chai teas are amazing, though. Yeah. All their chai teas and uh, but the least the loose leaf tea today you didn't. Yeah, have. I did not. I didn't. I wasn't yeah. feeling the loose leaf tea, but yeah. um, I, I but do. But coffee, impresso. The coffees are amazing now. Awesome. Okay, guys. So we don't come to Stockton unless you go there. Sorry. Are you done? Yeah. Oh, and show them our picture. Oh, M G. <laughs> are you done? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. It's out of my system. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, you know, our, my mother-in-law um, really, really has been looking for a Bible with a, a super giant print. And every time we look for one online, because I know this because I tried to send one to my mom that said super giant print. And there's a lot of people out there that need super giant print. And I know that for a fact. Um, and I tried sending my mom one. And it was not super giant print, trust the me. The ones on Amazon that say... Super giant print, they're not. And I finally decided to try to send her another one that said super giant print. And she said, Mija, it's mm. not. And I, I mean, went, it's bigger than this, but not by much. Yeah, it's not. So we he, we were at Walmart. Um, I was getting a few things. And David, just, David ended up being in the book aisle, which he loves. No, I went to the $5 DVD bin first. <laughs> I didn't find nothing. Yeah, but he ended up in the book aisle where he always ends up. And he says, hey, he says, come here, you know. So I went over there and we found the Thomas Nelson. And guys, it's this is a Thomas good Nelson. size. It, they're, it, they're, it's actually not a thick Bible either. And it is a really nice, it's a, it's, a, it's a good size, man. And it is a super giant print new king james version it ain't that much bigger so it ain't like this huge it's oh. not huge i'm gonna take it out there I mean, it's bigger but it's not like and it's you're a, not walking around with a suitcase yeah it's it's a beautiful leather it's a brown look like le yeah cross. look nice. how beautiful it's like engraved in yeah there. it's engraved it's beautiful but guys now this is a huge print bible I'll compare it so they can see this one yes compare it guys Look at that. Wait, does it? Hold on. Compare that with that, guys. Now that's super giant print. Guys, guess how much this Bible was for? This, I have seen these literally at the big, at the Bible stores and everything and online for like about 60 bucks. Mm -hmm. Easy. It, easy. 60 bucks. $24.99. And that's your regular price at Walmart, guys. $24.99 and it was on special. It was a rollback deal for $21.99 right now. $21.99, guys. So if are you guys, it's you know the new King James version and $21.99. And that's the rollback. $24.99. But even at regular prices. Which is $24.99, guys. Look at that. Camera's in this side, babe. Oh, sorry. You ain't showing them nothing. <laughs> Guys, right. that's amazing. So I think you guys should head over to Walmart and buy some of these to give some of these or whatever. But we ended up getting our, our moms these ones, you know, because their eyes, they really need them. And um, 
You can't you can't beat that, guys. I've never seen it for that price like that. We had yeah, we have never seen. And it's a Nelson. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So I needed to share that with you guys. You know, whenever we see stuff like that, we definitely need to tell you guys get out there and go go buy the Bible. See, you're just we're just full of facts today. Yeah, that's awesome. So go, mm. guys. All right, now let's get into Gospel of John, chapter twelve. Verse 24 and 25. Yes. Y'all ready? Yes. I'm okay. getting my Texas accent going. You getting ready? I'm getting ready for some hoggly wogglies. <laughs> okay. In the words of Jesus, he says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Amen. I read out of the message and David reads out of the New King James. Um, that's why we suggest that you guys should go get that Bible. <laughs> Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life just as it, as it, is, just, uh, just as it is destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal. Amen. That was like tongue twisting. Yeah. I like how it says this, first of all, unless a grain of wheat falls and dies, nothing's going to come of it. It's going to be by itself. Yeah. You know? here's, a, here's what's amazing to me is that everything in the universe, everything in our planet, everything in reproduction, everything in flowers, plants, animals, whatever. Has a purpose. It's, it, it's, no, well, not, it's deeper than a purpose. It's an illustration of the gospel it's an illustration of jesus it's an illustration of everything you know because if one kernel of corn falls to the ground you get a whole stock yeah so when he was put in a tomb it was a form of burial he was the first the firstborn he was the seed if it weren't for him being uh being being killed and buried we wouldn't be here because we're the fruit of it you know, so so him being put in a tomb was an example of a seed being buried in the ground. Mm -hmm. Because if, if the seed stays out, it doesn't germinate and doesn't create anything. He had to die in order for us to come. You know, so, and, and because we're to be like Christ. He's not asking us to die physically, but he asks us to die in the sense of giving our life over to him. Why do you think baptism is so beautiful? Because baptism is a representation that you are being buried. You know, so until that happens, you cannot produce fruit. You know. Or, you, or produce more. You know, the other day you showed me, um, you showed me a, a picture of, of them putting uh, sand uh under under a microscope mm -hmm. oh yeah and there was so much life well they I, were all different the yes different... But, the, but but that that's that's actually life they're minerals mm -hmm. and in minerals um what what it does it 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 gives it fortifies it gives life it's it's um it it's vitamins it's um minerals is good you know it, it produces like, even the soil when you have dirt when you have anything it it helps produce you know it nourishes there's nourishment in those mi minerals yeah and that's everything. why the that's why when my dad would go before they lay seed they would rip the ground and turn it around to get those minerals yeah, ready for the water yeah. to feed the, the plants so and and in that same way and in that same way that 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 sand it's the same thing with with you know the soil and mm -hmm. with everything and if a seed is out here 
there is no nourishment. Yeah. There's nothing. But until you you're able to actually put the seed into that soil, into that dirt, into the ground, is when it's going to receive all the nourishment. Mm -hmm. And it was it was amazing because when you showed me that, I was so amazed to yeah. see all those minerals, to see all of that because that is that's life. It's nourishment. All of that is what you know gives it life. Well, I, I know I always like using an example of a corn stalk. Is that if you have an ear of corn, you can eat the whole thing and be full for a couple hours. Yeah. But if you bury those corn kernels, you'll have a field. Yeah. You know, and um, so it's the same thing, guys, that in church history, every single time a Christian has been martyred, the Lord will raise a hundred more. That's why Christianity couldn't be stopped. You know, they would, they would, they would send Christians, for instance, in the Roman Colosseum, Let's say 30 of them. They would send them and release the lions or whatever just to make an example of them. And those 30 would lose their life, but 300 more would see that, see the faith and see the, the perseverance in those 30 that lost their lives as they were screaming, probably screaming out Jesus. And when they saw that, those 30 converted into 300. And 300 converted into 3,000. And 3,000 into 30,000. And 300,000. And three, you know, it just keeps going and going yeah. and going because that is the very basic principle that Jesus, the example that he set. Yeah. You know, that's why, guys, we cannot be alive and live for ourselves and expect fruit to come forth. Because if, if that's the case, then what you, what you really are is a seed on the shelf on a Walmart. Little those little seed bags, mm. and we've talked about that before. Yeah. Those bags are not effective until they're put in the ground. Your life is not effective until you put your old life into the ground. Then you will produce fruit. You know, and, and I love that the fact that he says, and it's Jesus saying that he goes, "I say to you, unless a grain of wheat, just one little grain, unless it falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Because that one little grain." will produce a whole stock, which would have much grain on that one, just in that one, you know? And, and, and then he reiterates it, because he says, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. How does it say it in there again? Where's that at? Okay. Um, Listen carefully, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But, but if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is, just as it is destroys that life. Like, it is a tongue it's twister. It's tongue twisting. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it forever, real and eternal, guys. So, yeah. you know, and it's a trip because a lot of times we want to hold control of things. We want to hold control of our marriage. We want to hold control of our life. We want to hold control of even our ministry. And unfortunately, Jesus is like, hey, unless you let that thing go, ain't nothing going to happen. Yeah. You got to let it go. You got to surrender it. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because we were talking a few days ago about that, how so many times, so many people that I know, they almost want to force the ministry they want. And then it doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. And, 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 and then... God will just drop it on the lap of somebody else. Yeah. And it works. Why? Because they let it go. Yeah. You cannot, Jesus is like, unless you let it go, there's nothing that's going to happen. But man, when you let it go, and, and, and there's something about it where the, where the Lord brings growth, you know? I think when you just be about the business, you know, Jesus' business, He'll take care of everything else. And sometimes, you know, he'll give you the desires of your heart in his timing, not not mm -hmm. our timing. You know, and a lot of the times he he knows what, what it is that you desire. And um, a lot of the times I think we're we're too busy wanting to try to make it ourselves, wanting to 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 make it happen. And, and trying to figure out, okay, how can I make this happen? How can I get this ministry going? How can I? And he's like, why are you trying to make it happen? 
Why are you wanting to make it happen? What are you doing? Step aside. Just leave it alone. You know, just let it be. Let it go. And just let him do it. Yeah. In his timing. And sometimes we're too much in a rush to try to to try to get things going and he's just saying just let it happen when I when I when I allow it to happen because when he allows it to happen in his timing then everything falls right into place it really really does I agree yeah I agree you do mhm mm good babe I'm glad. you know so even the very fundamental basic thing of a flower being planted, uh, a fruit, a, a you know, vegetable. What inspired you today? Were you looking at my sunflower today? No, I was looking at, no, I just, honestly, I just opened the Bible and oh, it was just there. But You took a picture of it today, I saw. Oh, I was messing around with my camera on the phone. Yeah. I wanted to see how it looked, how it looked um, close up, if it would make the background blurry, and it does. Yeah. You know, but just... The very fact that you can bury one seed and you get a whole new plant with much of that same fruit, it's, that's incredible to me. You know, I, um, I remember preaching a sermon years ago that was said, I think it was titled, God is a God of Multiplication. You know, because a lot of times we think, man, you know, I haven't given my, I gave my life to the Lord as, as, as I was older or older in age. And so you're like, man, I gave... You know, like for me, I, I, I surrendered my life to the Lord when I was 32. And I regretted not giving my life to the Lord before. Because I was like, man, Lord, I wish I would have given you my youth. You know, my, my teen years, my, my 20s, you know. And, you know and, but here's the thing, that God is not a God of addition. He's a God of multiplication. And it's, it's that basic law is already ingrained in even the seed. Yeah. You don't bury one seed of let's say um what an avocado that's that big giant seed you don't bury one seed and then god gives you two avocados you bury one seed and he multiplies it into many gives you a whole tree yeah. of avocados so even even in the laws that god instituted on this earth he's a god that multiplies you know so he will take something of yours that's why like guys you don't have to be um, like the next person. You don't have to be a scientist or a doctor or, or a, a professional public speaker. He will take the little you have and he will multiply it. Yeah. He's a God of multiplication. You know, and that's, that's the thing that a lot of times we don't understand because we think like, man, Lord, um, it's like, man, I gave my life to you at 32. So... It's going to take 32 more years to, and he's like, no, I multiply. You know what, you know, what's really cool. And I know it sounds kind of, sounds kind of weird, but you know, I, I envision it, um, right now when you say that, you know, because I envision it a lot, when you say that with every single time that our prison ministry goes out and you talk about multiplication, I, when when these guys talk about how they're using the sermons to give yeah. um, Bible studies, you know they're they're doing it now, guys. They're actually now we're we're getting actual guys who are saying, "Hey, is there any way you can send it to me because we're I'm you know I'm giving Bible studies or I'm I'm you know giving a sermon or I'm doing this and I'm using you know can I please have a whole month or can I have this because they're actually requesting them now for that purpose." And that's really cool. So now what I'm doing is I'm envisioning David in that prison. Multiplying. The multiplication. I can envision what David used to do in that prison because he has given us so many times where he has preached and he has allowed us to envision what he used to do in that prison. And that's what I'm envisioning. Mm -hmm. All of our guys who are doing the, the who are, are, you know, our family yeah. in there and what they're doing. And that's what I'm envisioning. And I'm like, Lord, you are multiplying exactly what he did. And it is happening. And we're starting to see it happen. Yeah. Because they pass it to either. They yeah. also pass them out. You know, a lot of times you're the way 
in jail or prison or whatever, they're broken off into units, you know, um, or cell blocks, depending where you're at. So you have access to, you know, 30, 60, 80 other men, and then you're just locked down. So you just pass that sermon along, you know, yeah. and that's the way it grows. And some of them are like, hey, you know, everybody in the unit says, hey, what's up, family, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty cool because... Now you're getting you're getting hellos by the groups, you know, and they're they're saying, you know, unit so and so all says hello and God bless you all and we're all praying for you guys and that's what's beautiful. Yeah, so you buy that one what's what's one stamp? Is it fifty five or sixty five? Uh, I don't even 55? know but all I know. I think it's fifty five. Yeah. The, the the stamps are fifty five cents, right? Fifty five pennies. Think about it. And it's gonna get a sermon to an inmate, and that inmate, I guarantee you, is gonna share it. I mean 55 cents yeah you know that's just come on i mean it it, it it's a no-brainer yeah it's a no-brainer you know what i mean and to be able to share the gospel and and actually send sermons that is actually teaching them something you know i, I don't like just sermons that are you know have you ever ate cotton of course most of you ate cotton candy it looks like this big thing but the moment you put it in your mouth it just dissolves yeah and unfortunately a lot of people give cotton candy sermons where all they do is eat it and it looks big and it looks fluffy and it looks nice, but it ain't going to fill you because it dissolves the moment that it comes in. You know, so we like to send these sermons, man, that that are that are meat. It ain't yeah. cotton candy. It's meat. That, that, that way they can consume it and it nourishes them in the same way meat does. You know, so I'm really excited about that, guys. So, yeah, um, yeah you know, so I think that's pretty much it. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a good verse. It's a powerful verse. And uh, you guys learned a whole bunch of facts, too. So, wow. You even got to uh, see the clapper. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, uh, what kind of laugh was that? <laughs> I don't know. But, that was weird. Yeah, guys, we're going to see you on Sunday. I'm still not sure what I'm going to preach on yet, but the Lord will give it to me. Uh, sometimes he has things brewing in my head, and then, you know, around Friday or so, it starts to germinate, starts yeah. to starts to pop up in my head, and by Saturday, you know, I I write some some ideas down and stuff. Amen, so. amen. But well, yeah. guys, we love you guys, and we will see you today. Yeah, we'll see you guys on Sunday. God bless you guys. All right, Enjoy bye. your coffee. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? One thing, Mr. Juan said that. Cadillac coffees were overrated. Where did you have a Cadillac coffee? Well, here's coffee? the problem. You it's... probably didn't have a good Cadillac coffee. Well, the problem was I didn't make it. Exactly. We probably didn't make it. But you know what? I don't drink Cadillacs, but he does. But I make them. Or he makes them. So we know they're good. We ought to make you a Cadillac. Doesn't so, he live here? Yeah. We're going to make you a Cadillac. You're going to come have a Cadillac with us. I don't know where you had a Cadillac. You did not have a good Cadillac. Your, your, your Cadillac had hubcaps broken. <laughs> <laughs> and broken hubcaps, a flat tire, and a broken rearview mirror. <laughs> no, no, no. You need a good, authentic Cadillac, okay? That was not a Cadillac. That was a, that was a lemon. That was a broken down car. <laughs> yeah. The, one of the lifters was busted, so it's... <laughs> One headlight was out. Yeah, so that was not a good Cadillac. The all right? seat was ripped. That was more like a Pinto. Remember the Pinto? The dashboard don't work. <laughs> One of the the door on the passenger don't open, so they, they got to get in through the window like the Dukes of Hazard. I've done that before. <laughs> radios, all, the radios busted. The antenna. I did that in an Oldsmobile before. That's oh, yeah. crazy. Just the good old boys. Remember Dukes of Hazard? Did you ever watch Dukes of Hazard? Yes, I did. They all, they never opened the doors. I know. They couldn't, I think. Weren't they, no, weren't they, they could, but that's just the good old boy way how to get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> really? I guess. I don't know. Did it looked cool when I was a kid. I just had to bring it up because he's like, it was overrated. I'm like... I kind of felt a little, my heart was like a little hurt. I no, was like, mine wasn't. I just knew he didn't taste the one that I made. I was like, I w no, I was hurt because I was like, who hurt my Mr. and Mrs. Ron? Who hurt you? <laughs> I, was, I was like, who gave them a, a bad Cadillac? I was like, no, 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 no. 
So we're gonna we're gonna make you a good one. All right. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. All now, right. now, now we can say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.